What is Shagath? It is a terrible, indescribable thing. A shapeless conjuries of protoplasmic bubbles with myriads of temporary eyes forming and unforming. Quite nasty. Ew. Fabulous episode of Drunken Sorcery. Bum, bum, bum. Hey, we're recording this time. It's not like the first lost 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm never going to let you live that down. <laughs> Dude, in a weird, fucked up way, it was the most appropriate way we could ever start. Like, oh, yeah. We could not have planned to fuck up that well. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it was rather brilliant, so. God, it's been so long since we fucking recorded because of fucking quarantine and everything else. I forgot how we fucking start these things. Oh, uh, usually we do some jackass thing and make a couple of smart-ass comments and say, okay, here we go. All right, so rock, paper, scissors for Rojambeau? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than rock, paper, scissors for who's taking Bukaki. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That just reminded me. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. No, 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 no. You are not going to start off with some bukkake tales from the deep. No, no, no. It's better. Oh, God. All, All right. right. Go ahead. So I'm totally telling tales out of school here. And I'm nowhere. I haven't even started drinking. So, so I am not. Uh, don't even have that as an excuse. The other day. I was down a rabbit hole of fucking weird porn, and... Because <laughs> that's a surprise. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I got, like, okay, I've got two monitors. There's usually porn on one of the monitors. Okay. But it's never anything really of interest, or it's just background, you know? Okay. Well, that video ends, go to another video, go to another video, working on something, doing something, go to another video. And the next thing I know, I look up and there's this chick and, and they're doing the whole body writing thing. Mm -hmm. On one leg, she has useless, okay. like one inner thigh. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the other leg, she has use me. Yeah. And the fact that I'm sitting here. Watching niche BDSM esque degradation porn, and instead of having anything erotic about it, my brain is trying to figure out the linguistical logistics <laughs> of that paradox. <laughs> Use me, I'm useless, I don't <laughs> right? Understand. And at that moment, I've realized you there is something way too much porn. <laughs> that, well, either that or there is something seriously broken in my brain where. What is more fascinating to me is that linguistical paradox. Okay. As opposed to anything on the actual <laughs> screen. And it was just one of those, huh, I think I need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yeah. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we start drunken <laughs> sorcery. <laughs> oh. Useless porn. <laughs> Our assistant producers are Lisa Kelly Briggs, Ialessa Glass, Raven Madigan, Starina Abrahamson, and Gina Volpe. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> All right. Um, like I was saying earlier, because we had a brief, brief interlude of conversation that wasn't recorded. As usual. As usual. This recording is going to be the 24th episode that we've done. And since we're doing seasons based on the year, this will be the last recording of season two. <laughs> Which I never thought we'd make that far anyway. Right? Like, <laughs> honestly. So the fact that we've already got a relative game plan for keep going. Right. I'm impressed with us. Yeah. High five. Hell yeah. <laughs> so...
before we get into to all the weeds of everything, first of all, predominantly because of quarantine, but also because of just logistics and all sorts of other factors going on, I haven't seen you for a while. Yeah. How have you been? Like, how how's things going? Crazy. Well, obviously. You, you That's saw, normal. You saw the <laughs> state of this room when you walked in. Between work and business and stupid amounts of overtime and dogs and vet visits and fucking all sorts of other bullshit going on they add to that you know hunting season and everything else mm. and it's just it's insane you know trying to find time to do anything other than work right because it's always working on something right right, is, right. In, it you're always pushing few and far between them. you know it's it's go to bed at 12 one o'clock in the morning get back up at five or you know and that's that's nights that i'm not going out hunting in the morning it's like right i, I can't even you know I, I don't even know the last time i actually like slept in gotcha because it's been that long so far yeah but i'll tell you what i plan on it tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> right so i got a weird question because i've never been out hunting yeah okay it's one of those like i've always wanted to go but, you know, things never lined up right and it's never coordinated and everything else. Just never have. Okay. So I have a very warped view of some of the the minor nuances of the, I don't want to say sport, but like the, mm -hmm. the function of it. Now, what's really weird is that many of the larger parts, things like the ethics of it and the, you know, major structures of it, I've actually looked into and studied and, and and familiar with. Okay. It's the little things that you wouldn't expect that end up fascinating me because I have no fucking clue. So the start of hunting season, I picture a guy out in like Victorian garb with a top hat with a fucking like starter whistle and a gun, <laughs> going, you know, and a bunch of hunters like on a mark with a fucking shotgun strap to their back, like you know, ready and go, bang, you know, and they all like sometimes, sometimes jump it into seems the like woods that during gun season, like, <laughs> like how does hunting season start? Like, well, no, I mean, it's... and I don't mean like there's a date, yeah, yeah, but I mean, how does the actual process of what it is like for people to like does that make sense for what I mean? example okay like the the october 1st is the beginning of bow season okay so generally so you know, is it at midnight on october 1st technically okay but you're not but you also have to abide by certain states at certain hours okay gotcha like new york state with uh 15 minutes before sunrise and 15 minutes after sunset okay anytime within daylight hours and those 15 minutes before or after technically that's when you're allowed to hunt. Really? You I can didn't... be in the woods at two in the morning. Okay. But because you can't see what you're shooting at, oh. and you're not allowed to use flashlights or anything like that, because otherwise you're hunting at night. Gotcha. Like, I can use a flashlight, walk my way through the woods, get into my stand, and sit there for the hour of darkness before sunrise, and as long as it's within that 15-minute mark of sunrise, I can take the shot. Gotcha, gotcha. So... All of that being said, it's one of those, you know the date is coming up, so you, you start to get all your gear prepared, you're, you're double checking everything, final preparations, make sure you've got, you know, you, your boots are still good, your clothes is washed with scent-free detergents and non-UV brighteners and all sorts of other crap. Right. And then when you try to go to bed like the night before, it's like a kid on Christmas. Okay. Because can't fall asleep and... yeah and your brain is like but i gotta get up in the morning but i gotta get up in the morning but i really need to go to bed now but i gotta get up in the morning I, oh my god i can't make sure i make sure i don't miss my alarm oh my did i set my alarm oh my god like your brain's going a million miles an hour at least for me it does right yeah and this is every year right and then it, it happens again at the beginning of gun season now okay. i've already been doing this for a month for bow season but now that i get to use my shotgun tomorrow oh my god there's gonna one and then you have the worry of there's going to be a thousand and one other people out in the woods during gun season. Mm. And that's when you have 90% of your like city dwellers that come up to the rural areas and country areas to go hunting because you can't do it in the city. Right, right, right. So if you're on public land during gun season, 
it's insane. Like we we have bets online as far as who's going to hear the first shot. <laughs> And, wh- and what time it's going to be. Because we all know, for example, say, you know, as an arbitrarily, sunrise is at 6 a.m. Okay. So we'll take bets, you know, 545, 530, 540. <laughs> you know, like, what time is the first shot going to go off? Right. Not whether it's a good one or not, but what <laughs> right. time is it going to be? You know, how early is it going to be? Now, the only thing I can, and, and like I said, this is just my brain having no reference that I'm trying to, like pull from something to even wrap my head around with like a movie the movie comes out you know it's going to be a big deal there is a group of people that are like nope we are going to be fucking you know an hour before the movie starts we're going to get in line we're going to mm-hmm. get our tickets like we're going to cram into that packed theater and fucking it's an event and for i don't want to say many people but a lot of times the festivity of that many people in a space, and mm-hmm. this was all granted pre-COVID, was a part of the experience above and beyond just seeing the film. There's another group of people that I happen to be a part of that are like, fuck that shit. <laughs> too many people, too small space, too yeah. fucking distracted. I'll wait, I'll wait a week or two. And see it in a Sunday matinee when no one's around, you know, yeah. or at least it's less populated, like that type of thing. Is there a similar thing in hunting where it's like, okay, you get your your idiots on day one, but then the veterans all come out on like day four? Or like, is it something like that? Or is it no, totally it's different? more a matter of you try to get out there early enough okay. to get into a good position. That somebody else hasn't already taken. Okay. And hope that you can see if anybody else is coming closer to you to stop them first. Gotcha. So, for example, like, I could be sitting in a ground blind, and as long as I see, like, the flashlight of the guy coming up the trail coming towards me, as long as I signal to him that, hey, I'm already over here, hopefully he's ethical enough to, or, or moral enough, whatever, to pick a different spot right right, and not just like you know oh i'll sit 20 yards away from you you know jackass right um what could be worse you can pick the next tree well well, that's 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 another like comical thing because there's a meme going that goes around every year where it shows you know a guy sitting in a tree and everything's dark and he's just by himself and then it says as soon as sunlight comes up and you look around and it shows like every fucking tree has another hunter sitting in it (laughs) nice yeah because especially on on public land because it's not like you can sit there and say you're not allowed to be here right 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 you have to go you know go over that way 50 yards or 500 feet whatever kids there's really a a gentleman's agreement type thing yeah it's, it's one of those you know you wouldn't want someone doing it to you right you don't do it to another person. Right, right, right. That being said, I almost got into a fucking fight. <laughs> Story time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sitting there now. Mind you, it's been... I've been out hunting since, you know, opening day, October 1st, bow season. Okay. First time, the property that I was hunting on, the owner leased it to a local gun club. Hmm. So they came around, they put up posting signs. Then there's an altercation between one of them and one of the friends of the landowner. And now the landowner says, okay, fine, I don't want anybody hunting here. So even though I was not involved in any of this, I now lost the the one private area that I could hunt. Right. So I've been on... This is why we can't have nice things. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) So I've been on, you know, public land. No problem. I got a couple of areas around around here that, you know, I know where I can go, whatever, and I'm familiar with the, the terrain, so it's, it's okay, I'll go down this area, I'll, you know, I know they travel through here a lot. Right. So, I've been going out a couple different times, and, you know, I've seen deer pretty much when I went out, but it's either I didn't have a good shot, or I didn't feel comfortable with the shot, or it was too thick to take a shot, or right. whatever the case may be, you know, thick meaning, like, the, the amount of brush and woods, and right. I didn't want to hit a branch and have a, a bad shot. Right, right, right. So, I haven't gotten a deer yet. So I'm sitting there, I think it's the second weekend of gun season, or second day of gun season, one or the other, and here comes a doe right down the trail right in front of me. All right, no problem. So she gets to a certain point, 
I'm sitting there, I'm waiting. She's right behind a tree so I can move without her seeing me. She takes one step forward. Her head comes out from behind the tree. I'm perfectly still. I'm already gun up, aimed, ready to go. I hear noise coming from off to my left-hand side and slightly behind me, which the trail comes from. So I'm like, okay. So I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. I glance over. Here's another hunter. Oh. So I motion to him to stop. He looks dead at me, sees me aiming my gun at the deer, and kind of like gives like his head like a, a okay type nod, and I look away from him, and I'm now focused on the deer, waiting for her to take another step forward so that I can take a shot, so I can hit the vitals. Right. As she starts to take a step forward, boom! Are you shitting me? He fucking shot the deer. Oh my god. I was livid. I went off on him to the point where one of his buddies who is like three ridges down comes running over. What happened? What happened? Who's who's hurt? What happened? Because he heard the shot go off. Oh. And the, are you fucking insane? Fuck. I was, I was, yell you've heard me yell. Yeah. I was yelling. <laughs> I was that pissed. To the point where after I explained the scenario to his friend, he turns around and even his friend was like, yeah, dude, that's not fucking cool. You saw him aiming at the other deer. Why'd you fucking take the shot? Was he just a new hunter? He, his excuse was, I didn't know what he was waiting for. <laughs> I'm waiting to have a fucking... She's behind a tea tree, party. jerk off. You were waiting for a tea party. Yeah. There was Mickey Mouse and Al Alice and then, Mouse on the So land. then the part that, that even pissed me off more, to the point where I almost sat there and looked at him and said, you're not going to leave these woods, it was, I turned around and said, you're being a fucking asshole. He looks dead in my face and goes, yeah, I'm an asshole with a deer. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. He, oh. it, it, it took a lot of restraint to not just like butt stroke the side of his face at right. that point because I was pissed. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, one of those things that, okay. you're an asshole with a black eye, fucker. <laughs> We're both carrying loaded weapons. Yeah, th this yeah. is not going to end well. I'm just going to leave it as it is, and as pissed as I am, I'm going to walk away. Right. Because if this escalates any further, I know my temper, and I know my abilities. This is... I'm yeah. going to prison. Right. <laughs> Plain and simple. <laughs> it's like, well, I could, but... Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So how'd your hunting season go? Ah, I was in prison. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, not for nothing... That wouldn't be that shocking of a story. <laughs> like, it Wait would be an entertaining story, Wait, I'm not but sure not surprising. Or, I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing. <laughs> that it would not shock you that I ended up in prison over hunting season. <laughs> well, there I was. <laughs> Covered in deer urine, and orange vest ripped, and they put me into the holding cell. And everybody looked over and went, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> you didn't get my pocket knife. <laughs> God. I was oh. hiding it. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a interesting day, to say the least. Yeah. I, I, was, I was pissed. Other than that, it's it's been pretty good. I mean, I've seen a lot of deer. I've found a few areas that are quite promising that i hadn't ventured into before because of just not needing to i wasn't nah. worried about it yeah. I was like, yeah fuck it you know i'm not gonna go bother going back that far i'm not gonna go through that swamp area blah, blah, right blah. and now it's like all right well i gotta find some areas where some asshole's not gonna fucking walk down the trail and fucking drop whatever i'm aiming at right right so a little more exploring I, yeah yeah and, but then at the same time now, I've got to be very careful with that because you've got a ton of fucking retards out there with firearms right. that really shouldn't be in the woods with fucking firearms. Right. That if I'm out walking around and I'm trying to scope a different area, I don't want to get shot. Right. And I would not put it past some of these fucking assholes to intentionally do it. Right. Whether, okay, no, I shouldn't say intent, not necessarily intentionally shoot because they see it's me. Although, right, well, right. Yeah, there may be a couple of those. Um, <laughs> but, like, you know, just, oh, something's moving, and they take a shot, and right. then realize after the fact, oh, shit, that was a person. Right, right. You know, and I mean, I wear orange but, during gun season. But that doesn't mean that people are always going to look. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Back in the day when, when the, I had a much healthier uh, physiology, 
and go hiking and camping all over the fucking place. And especially in some of the more out-of-the-way places in Arizona. There are a number of places where, and it has nothing to do with hunting, but you have to be very cautious and savvy and aware of where you're going. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, it's still public land. When you have that much acreage that is that deserted, you don't know who's out there that lives there. Yeah. And that may uh, not take a liking to you coming onto their property. Yeah. And hasn't seen a human in 20 years. You's trespassing in my front yard, boy. <laughs> right. And you know what? It, 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 it's the running joke of... Uh, of uh, Do you hear banjos? <laughs> no. That, that's more this side of the Mississippi. It's, it's the running joke of... The original Star Wars and the Sand People. Of, yeah. 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 It's er, very much. Er, 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 right? Like, the you, there are places you do not want to go. All right. Well, we're going to pause it there yeah. and uh, probably do dinner, and we will be right back. <laughs> I had to. And now for a station break. <laughs> And we're back. Those are some good wings, weren't they? The, the, uh, god damn it. <laughs> I was like garlic and I was like, no, no, no. no that wasn't no, the, the, the no, garlic that one, one was snuck up on you. Yeah. Um, the, the honey mustard fucking like. Oh, the gold yeah, rush. Yeah. Gold rush. That's what it was called. I was trying to think of the name and it just wasn't coming to me. That's okay. I understand. So, let's see. We covered how your time and adventures with hunting has been yeah. and avoiding so, jail. So, <laughs> <laughs> Which is always Factual. a good thing. Right? So, uh, how's your how's your one been? Uh, ew. Well, there are two very interesting phenomena. One of which is the most recent of my, my workspace workshop area which happens to be below ground got flooded oh that sucks yeah i was, I was yeah it was recently it was about a week ago fucking whole whole fucking bottom inch of the fucking floor is covered in fucking standing water and like yeah just was, in the workshop area or the whole downstairs? the whole area yeah so oh uh, yeah so the 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 bad news is that i lost quite a bit of material and supplies and yeah still a couple of friends of mine have been helping me go through everything and fucking see what's salvageable and all of that and the good news if you can call it that is that i did not lose as much as i thought i would okay but there's still quite a bit that fucking... still a considerable amount though yeah, and, you know, it's salvage what you can, and, oh, great, this box full of, you know, cardboard. Well, that's all fucking deteriorated and covered in mildew and fucking soaked through. Oh, this, you know, canvas board now has a fucking huge warp and water line across it. Mm. You know, fucking, oh, here's three frames that fucking completely got soaked through and fucking are worthless now. And, that like, sucks. just... Yeah, going through and, okay, yeah. that's scrap, we can salvage the glass out of it. That's scrap, we can salvage the fucking, like, I had probably, I don't know, ten, ten pre-cut mats, you know, that got completely soaked, so those are all, like, it's just going through fucking, nope, that's scrap, that's scrap, that's still salvageable, that's scrap, that's scrap, like. Matt, as far as, what do you mean? Like, a... like the matting for a round uh, picture. Okay. Like, yeah. Okay, I got so. you. Like a, for like a matte back frame or something. Like yeah. That. Okay. It's just shit like that. The fucking. Is. So it's been a, a very. Yeah, that blows. Challenging man. week. We'll put you it should have said something earlier. Uh, it is. There's nothing. It, it's one of those. There's nothing I can really do about. Like it is what it is. So. No, I it's get just that. More but fucking it, a pain still, I could have come over and helped. Yeah, it's it's with you know what time I would have had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 I would, I would have made time. I would, I would have been able to figure something out and rearrange some shit. And I would have made time. No, I, I, I appreciate the sentiment and, and it, it, 
It's kind. It's more of. I don't tell too many people I'm nice. Come on. <laughs> it's more of like half the time I'm just in there staring at it going, I don't even know. Like, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know where to start with this. Like, yeah. And it's like, okay, we've got half done. Well, let's start where we left off. And I'm sitting there going, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, here's a box. Okay. Um, start going through it. Uh, sure, I guess. Um, <laughs> you know, because I don't. It, it's one of those like I don't even want to look at what damage is done. You know. Gotcha. It's yeah. So it's been uh entertaining. Um, plus side is I'm getting more workspace. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Which is a horrible way to fucking get it, but yeah, sure. yeah. Oh. So, Not how you wanted it to work out, right? right? So the other odd bit of adventure I've been managing is that uh, apparently I'm a pirate. You're a pirate? Arg. Okay. So, which reminds me, I got a story for it. In the process of cleaning out what got soaked and what got damaged and everything. You found booty? No, we ran across the fucking <laughs> the gin bottle that business manager found for me. Okay. And the container that was in was completely soaked, so we had to transfer it. Only the transfer didn't go so smoothly. And so there was cleanup and clusterfuck and everything else. So what I think is hilarious is there was me and two other people doing this. And... One of them had just got done moving a bunch of heavy sit and was like taking a break and just kind of watching because it's kind of a small space and, mm -hmm. you know, there's only so much room. And so me and my business manager were dealing with this bottle, sand everywhere, clusterfuck, which half an hour right before, most of the day before, been fine, felt fine, everything's fairly good. Fifteen minutes after both her and I are fucking injured and can barely move. Gotcha. Knees are shot, fucking weak in the knees, my back's fucking like muscle spasming, she's fucking got her ankle fucking completely screwed up and can barely walk now and is hobbling. Wow. At which point we both look at a third person and is like, Oh, so you wanna jump in and give it a go? And they were like, No. <laughs> no. <-uh. laughs> No, nope, I'm good. <laughs> Which, of course, I got to be a smart ass. And I was like, oh, no, you just got to believe that it won't hurt you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to sit my happy ass back here and let you have all the fun. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's like when you deal with actual real shit. It's not this fucking bullshit, fucking new agey hippie. Like, oh, just feel the feels, man. It's like, no. That's why it's where it is is because that does not need to be floating around in fucking yeah. some shop somewhere like <laughs> what could possibly go wrong right like so this is what's genius it made me think of that bottle yeah so when i first got in here for a listening audience or those that can't see mr mike looks over and fucking goes oh that bottle don't open it of course, you know that's gonna <laughs> that's course. gonna make me want to. I figured, you know? I do, honestly, I figured for sure you'd just pick it up and sniff it, and open it up. <laughs> like, why? What's in it? Oh God! <laughs> so when I reboxed and packaged the gin bottle, instead of putting like you know danger, do not open or anything, I put in giant letters. Perfectly safe. Nothing dangerous about this. <laughs> <laughs> that way, if anything should ever happen to me and someone has to like go through and sort through shit, they'll get to that and be like, uh-uh. No. Yeah. No. no. I think so. <laughs> because Liar. If, I, if I put danger, don't open, what's the first thing they're going to do? Yeah, why like, not? Well, okay. <laughs> I figure at least that'll give pause, you know? <laughs> you hope. I hope. <laughs> Oh, Chris. Anyway, so, yeah, I'm a pirate. So, that is a weird segue to that the stuff I deal with and the things I do in dealing with the occult is not what you see in fucking, like, you know, ten ways to fucking put a spell on your lover and fucking the new agey bullshit type, you know. It is real and has real shit Consequences. to it. Consequences. Yeah. 
And so one of the things that I have been struggling with for probably the last six months on and off is just that too. <laughs> it's really severe health problems. And it comes and goes, but it's it's been increasing. Okay. And so it got to the point where I was like, fuck this shit. It's annoying enough and getting severe enough where, all right, fine, I need to do something about this. Oh, yeah, I have skills and abilities to fucking... Wait, why have I put up with this for so... Like, I can fucking... Right? Yeah. Well, that's, you know, like the same adage that, you know, just because a person's a mechanic doesn't mean they're going to have a nice car. Right. Because the last thing they want to do after working on somebody else's shit all working week long is fix their own at the end of the week. Right. Yeah. It's a very similar function where it's like, for me, everything revolves around and surrounds like doing the art and doing work. And it's like, yeah, but when it comes to me personally, I can fucking design a fucking coat that costs fucking $10,000. And yet, I wear fucking shit that's fucking half patched and fucking yeah. you know ratty as fuck. Because eh, it's mine, I don't care. Like it's that <laughs> yeah. kind of thing, you know. So, but it gets to the point where I'm just like, all right, fuck this shit. So, do a bunch of shit. <laughs> Vanity, you are not <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> so I end up doing a bunch of fucking like shady occult shit and fucking look into stuff. Because one of the I don't want to say like rules, but it's kind of like a order of operation best practice mm-hmm. is first you, before doing anything, you do a like an assessment. You know, typically what you see is it's done through some variant form of divination, but that isn't the only way to do things. But toward the end of you kind of go, okay, what have I got to work with? What's going on? What's the nature of the situation? You know, you gather information. Okay. And so going about various different occult means, you know, you put technique and practice on the input side and on the output side popped out orange juice. To which I went, what the fuck? All right, let me double check this because, huh? Input side, out pops orange juice. All right, sure. We'll give it a shot. Got some orange juice. Took a drink of orange juice, took another drink. Have you ever had caffeine withdrawal? Yes. Okay. Almost daily. (laughs) And when you have that, when you take that drink of caffeine, where it's a body sensation of, (sighs) Mm -hmm. I got that from orange juice. Really? At which point I went, what the fuck? So after two days of drinking orange juice... In which I drank like almost two or three gallons over the two days. By day three and four, I felt like I felt two, three years ago. Wow. I could walk. I didn't need a cane. Like, it didn't hurt to move. Hmm. All sorts of crazy shit. Oh, okay. A week later, fucking back to normal. Fucking everything hurts and fucking hurts to move around. So I start looking into this more. Connected, but separate to this, I have a very unhealthy, poor relation with food. Yes. It's fairly known amongst my friends that I'm functionally anorexic. I'm not super skinny, I just don't eat. Mm -hmm. Most of that's down to that same mechanic thing of I just don't think about it and fucking I'm busy and fucking next thing I know it's fucking, you know, 2.30 in the morning and I'm like, fuck, I'm tired, I'll eat tomorrow. (laughs) Well, turns out that I've pushed that to the point where I've given myself scurvy. Arrgh! Vitamin D or vitamin C deficiency. Yeah. Which I had always thought was just skin lesions. No. But apparently there's a number of other health effects that, yeah, I've been dealing with for like the last year. And it wasn't until I connected that and orange juice and vitamin C with talking to a friend of ours that's a doctor that she went, yeah, stupid. And I went, oh. (laughs) Damn, I wish I was there for that conversation. Right? Like, (laughs) so I'm a pirate. Let me ask you. I'm feeling this and this and this and this. And I drank orange juice and I feel better. I I just, I, I can hear the jackass right listen you don't and she knows me fairly well she's like you don't eat what do you think that is i went and 
honestly how the conversation went is I made a joke and I thought it was a joke of, I went, I don't know, scurvy. And she went, yeah. <laughs> just dead. <laughs> I'm just like, wait, wait what? what? Uh, it's like, no, but I don't really have skin lesions. I mean, I've got a couple spots here and there, but nothing bad. And she went, yeah, that's not all of it. Like, the doctor said the rash should clear up after a week. <laughs> it's just like, it's bad. So, yeah, I'm a pirate. Arr. I'm drinking too much salt water. <laughs> That's not salty water you're drinking. There's a reason why they have an eye patch. Yes. <laughs> That's your day in the barrel, boy. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. my uncanny timing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, I make people choke, I make people oh. piss themselves, I make people. <laughs> oh, God. So I yes. put across the room. I have uncanny timing to do right. that. So, yeah, so it's been a matter of working on eating healthier, managing the repair physiologically of the damage done, and vitamin supplement for all sorts of other fucking micronutrients that I haven't fucking <laughs> also had some other deficiencies well. that you've got. Right. Like I mean, because it's rare, it's not just vitamin C that I haven't been consuming. It's also things like iron and fucking, you know, other basic and food. Food. <laughs> right. You know? So it, things like that is like, okay, so you know, the combination of that and managing fucking health and then all that mix. So it's been the uh, yeah. But in the meantime, I'm like working on art and fucking, you know, making pretties and busting my ass and I'm drinking beer, getting ready to fucking uh, start up a whole new yeah. collection. Oh, which is did be you huge. see like, the new art bag they came out with? No, art bag. I think it's called a wee beastie or something like that. It's uh, it's a wee beastie. Yeah, it, it's God shit. Hang on, I'll find like, the commercial for it. Oh Christ. It's a commercial for it. It it was like a commercial thing that popped up on my Facebook feed, believe it or not. Weird. No, actually, fucking the last two pieces, they aren't even really pieces that I worked on. They're sort of like test pieces or, or ideas that I was putting together that I wanted to see how they'd work. One was a box and the other was a video I made. And uh, both of them I ended up fucking labeling something to the effect of, like, nothing to see here, or don't pay attention to this, yeah. or, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, I've completely revamped the structure for Patreon, and started backlog release for the various artwork. So, for the past year, we've been releasing the 13 Gifts of Fosanadu. Yeah. And then that just finished the end of October. And so now we're starting to release the stuff that got made while the 13 Gifts of Fozanadu was being released. And then while that's going on, I'm working on a huge major collection that i am got all the logistics and all the fucking numbers crunched and everything. And now it's just a matter of fucking building the thing. So, okay. That's exciting and thrilling, but that also means that fucking, you know, it, it's the... The brain work is over. The grunt work now begins. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. you know, so it's kind of like one of those, ah, but I like the brain work better because I can sit in my chair and just play with paper. <laughs> oh, play with paper. And on that note, I'm having a shot of Lockable in 16. So, uh, salut. Salut. Oh. Yeah. Big pink and mummy. <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ! Listen, the, the, it caught my attention. I'm going, what the hell? And then all of a sudden, I saw what it was. I was like, oh, I gotta tell Crow. <laughs> I kind of want it just for the commercial. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who thought of that commercial, but they did an epic job. Yeah. <laughs> that part was classic. <laughs>
See, now I gotta try it just for the fucking commercial. I'm probably... I mean, it's only aged five years. Yeah. But supposedly it it is, like, I've read, like, six or seven different reviews yeah. uh, from different uh, whiskey places, and it supposedly is, like, it tastes like you guzzled down about half a bottle based off the amount of peat and smokiness that it has hmm. in a shot, See, which is try. right up your alley. Yeah. The problem is, the last time I had Ardbeg, I did not like it. So, it's one of those, the only way I'll know is try it, you know what I yeah. mean? But it's like, eh, there's, I crossed. forget the name of it too, there's an app on my phone where I can order alcohol through the app and have it delivered <laughs> to the house. Shit. You know how dangerous that is for me? I think I heard you like, saying something about that. It's just like, not, Jesus not just like, like, there was a couple of websites that I could go to, but this is an actual, like, it's an app on the phone. <laughs> So it's like a search. Yeah, that one. Boom. Done. Ordered. It'll be here in two days. <laughs> right? It's like, whoa, fuck, this is bad. <laughs> this is going to be really bad. There there wasn't an even, are you sure? <laughs> no. Like, it was just, yeah. yeah this, this, and I, of course, I downloaded it. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, this, oh. it has the potential to be disastrous to my bank account. <laughs> right. Oh, so that reminds me. You were telling me about the guy that uh, did the audio engineering. Oh, yeah, yeah. You had said that he was interested based on the name. Mm -hmm. Is that where that left off, or did something come out of that? Oh, no, I played the most recent podcast that, you, that was, was launched. Okay. I played that at work, and he listened to it. Okay. And I got to get his uh, Facebook information, whatever, to send him a friend request and send him a link to the Spotify and shit like that. Okay. But no, he was like, dude, this is awesome. I loved it. Sweet. So I was like, hell yeah. He's like, yeah, you can tell you guys are fucking hammered, because, but it's fucking awesome. <laughs> he goes, it's serious, but yet comical at the same time. He goes, right. it's great. The interaction is phenomenal. Sweet. And the guy's like, like 25, mm -hmm. I think. Like, I know his father, and he's a down-to-earth, but financially well-off person. Okay. But he's down-to-earth type where he just wears, like, regular clothes. He's not, right. like, in a suit all the time. Right, right, right. And, he's not you know, trying to like, show off or anything. Yeah, he's got a brand new vehicle, but it's not top-of-the-line, high-end fancy. Right. It's, it's it, what he wanted, not what fucking he thought everybody else wanted yeah, to see. No, like, it's more a matter of, no, this fits my needs and that's all I need. I'm right. not stressing over all this fucking fancy, schmancy bullshit. And, yeah. You know, I needed a truck and it's a truck and it's got some other shit and it's got some shit that I don't really need, but it's part of the base package, but whatever. You know, he didn't even go for, like, the high-end, like, you know, sports edition or like that. No, right. I just need a truck. That's, I'm not worried about totally it. totally reminds me of this guy. I used to work doing security at a gated community. And every night this guy would come in, beat up old truck. I mean, fucking, there was more rust than paint on this thing mm -hmm. type, you know. And we ended up becoming acquaintances over talking about house hardware like doorknobs and hinges and shutters and mm -hmm. weird stuff of antiquity and how hardware has changed and developed and door latches and crazy shit like that and he'd pull up to the fucking gate and we ended up fucking talking for 45 minutes before fucking other one of us would be like oh i gotta get home type thing you mm -hmm. know yeah always showed up in fucking you know jeans and a t-shirt type thing and that must have been for like nine months until one day he pulls up with two fucking models in the back seat of back seat. It's a joke. Sorry. Okay. Two models in a fucking Ferrari in a fucking suit and tie. Same dude. Same dude. Okay. At which point my head cocks and the eyebrow goes up and I'm like, uh? <laughs> how much did you pay for that outfit? <laughs> right. <laughs> And his only was comment, Halloween? <laughs> and, right? And his only comment was, yeah, the board wanted to have a meeting. And apparently the fucking dude was fucking loaded. And, like, some fucking huge, like, mogul that fucking owned half the fucking buildings in downtown Phoenix. Oh, no shit. <laughs> like, but was so, how do I put it, like, down to earth of, that was not what he was about. Yeah. Like, that was just a side effect of him spending his life working his ass off. Yeah. And giving a shit about the quality of what he did. 
that it was like you could see in his reaction it was annoying to him that he had to dress up and put on airs <laughs> like <laughs> I don't want to wear clothes. Right? Like, it was very... It was, but that's what it kind of reminds me of, of just, like, like that sort of, like... I want to say, I want my diaper and have a beer. Fuck this right? shit. Right? <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh. That didn't come out right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So, besides your uh, flooding, what else yeah. have you been up to? Well, one of the big things that I wanted to talk to you about is... We've been talking back and forth periodically about... Those are sexual innuendos and jokes. Well, that's an aside. I wasn't going to share that, but okay. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I was just making sure. <laughs> Look, I'm not the one said... that tried to play gay chicken with you. You said a dog could watch, all right? <laughs> there might be crumbs in the bedroom. <laughs> there might be cr- Yeah, exactly. And the audience is going, what the fuck? Go get on your hands and knees and search around for the crumbs. Uh, So we've been talking about and toying around with the idea of changing up the format and changing up how we did this. And now don't be scared, ladies and gentlemen. We're not going anywhere. No matter how much you may want us to. Right. We're not. Well, it occurred to me that... One, we still need to do one last, I say in air quotes, last, one more of the same style, at least to finish out the season. Yeah. Okay. And what better way to not only reflect on what was good and what was bad over the previous season. Yeah. But to roll that into a conversation of what to do going forward. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. which would entail what worked, what didn't, things we like, things we don't, et cetera, et cetera. So with that, off the cuff, off the top of your head, which to me, in my thinking, is far more of an honest reflection of, I don't want to say legitimacy, but impact of over the past year, over the past season of doing these, you know, even though, albeit, you know, there's, hiccups with virus and everything else going around yeah but all in all over the past year of doing these you know what were some highlights that stood out to you what were things that you're like "Ooh, that was bad like you know um how about this let's go with a simpler one overall take over the past year i think it was good okay i generally you know like i said i enjoy doing this this for me this is fun it's like a once a month, whatever. I get to look forward to just cut loose for the night, have some drinks, <laughs> smoke some shit, you know, vape on some shit, and have a great time and chit chat with you. Get to see you, spend time with you, and all that type of stuff. Dude, and that just made me think we need to coordinate some time. Both of us get high. Uh, I don't know about that. Just once, just blazed out of our minds, just for the recording. <laughs> Let's put it this way. I've never been high. Don't give me that look. <laughs> it's never yeah. been my bag, so fucking... I, I think the last time I did anything like that, I was in freaking high school. Even better! And it was one of those, like, I just... Okay, this is all well and good. Everybody's all happy and shit. I just want to go to bed. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> oh, so it's going to be like that episode. I'm like, oh yeah, you guys are all having fun. I'm fucking over here ready to fall asleep. Fuck this. <laughs> And the worst thing was then I drove home. Oh. And it's like going around this corner. And I, I vaguely remember, I well, vividly remember this part. The corner's like a light, gentle, like, you know, sweeping corner for about maybe 100 feet. It felt like it took about an hour to go around that corner. <laughs> I thought I was doing the speed limit. And apparently I'm like crawling across oh. the road. Like, you know, at like two miles an hour, not 30. <laughs> So Okay, so I need to confess that I misspoke. I've never intentionally got high. Oh, okay. So I do not manage well being ill. Yeah. I do not deal reasonably with health concerns. <laughs> As we've noted with scurvy. <laughs> right. So Oh sorry, was that cloud right in your face? <laughs> yeah, it's alright. That just means you love me. <laughs> Hold on a minute. So years and years and years, many months ago, I ended up getting what I assumed to be the flu. And it, <laughs> Jesus Christ. How's that one? 
It's like I'm in a sauna out here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, years and years ago, I ended up getting sick. You were closing in a sauna? Probably, like the, the flu that I think ended up if i remember i ended up like becoming strep throat or some some something crazy okay mm -hmm. point is i was really really fucking sick and i ended up getting a really bad cough off of it okay yeah. to the point where i'll get a migraine and there has to be other things going on on top of that for me to take a tylenol like i don't take medicine oh. okay it has to be bad before I even consider that. I don't do medicine. I don't... It's not that I begrudge anybody. It's just... It's not my bag. Like, I'd rather fucking... Deal with it and pay force through. Right. Like, that goes back to that whole fucking, you know, mechanic thing is... Fuck, okay, it hurts. I'm just gonna well, take pills? Fuck this. Right. Like, it, it's... Yeah, it hurts. That means I'm not paying attention to what I need to, and I just have to pay attention more. Like... <laughs> Right. Look, I'm not saying it's healthy or reasonable. I'm saying this is right. how I do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it has to be bad. It got bad. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, fine. I break down and I drive to the store to get some fucking cough syrup. Mm -hmm. Okay. I go down the fucking cough syrup aisle and there's fucking cough syrup everywhere. Like there's fucking this brand and this brand and this version and this version and nighttime and daytime and fucking now with fucking big titty blondes and now with fucking whatever, like all sorts of fucking crazy different. Yeah, I don't have a fucking clue what any of whichever what. Oh, yeah. look, there's Robitussin. I've heard that's good. <laughs> that's all I know. <laughs> All right. So I'm a fucking dumb jarhead. The fucking, you know, goddamn walk out of the parking lot. Guzzle and it down. as I'm walking out of the parking lot, I fucking undo the fucking plastic around the top, undo the fucking child safety fucking lock ring thing. <laughs> On the top or underneath that, there's a little fucking was the original, cup. like glass bottle Robitussin. Yeah, like yeah, and they nice. have a little plastic <laughs> cup on the top of the thing, and I look at that and go, "Well, fuck that, and throw that away, and fucking crack the top and fucking take a shot of the fucking Robitussin, right? Get to my car, take another fucking shot because my throat really fucking hurts and I can barely breathe. It's so bad. Fucking drive out of the parking lot, take a fucking another shot. I've got maybe twenty four streets. Between the store and my house. Yeah. Okay. It's 10 minute drive. Okay. You know. Halfway to my house, I start seeing the street lamps, the, 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 the <laughs> telephone pole swaying back and forth. At which point, then they start like doing hula dance, like nice. wavy. And I start losing my shit of what the <laughs> fuck is going on. I had a similar thing to your driving experience, only the opposite, where apparently between my house and the store, all over Arizona, especially Phoenix, there's crisscrossing of canal system. Okay. That's how the city gets its water. Well, when you have a canal running, you know, a street crosses it, and they'll build a mini bridge yeah. that is bermed. But you still have a hump there. Yeah. I apparently caught air off that hump <laughs> in a residential 25 mile an hour zone. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, didn't realize that until the fucking cart fucking clumped down. And the only reason I caught air to begin with was because the trees that were chasing me. All right. <laughs> like. <laughs> It was bad. The trees are gonna um, kill me, man. The street lights were intentionally fucking with me. <laughs> like they kept going red, green, red, green. <laughs> Needless to say, somehow I managed to drive like pull up to my house in a safe somewhat manner it wasn't until like fucking months later that I learned there's this thing called robo frying <laughs> okay. which is basically ingesting a lot of robitussin for that hallucinatory oh. experience okay whoops <laughs> I never heard of it that way but okay 
then again, I also, like, you know, I've had friends who go and they'll grab, like, the big, like, family-sized bottle of NyQuil, walk out in the parking lot, chug the fucking thing down. Right. The whole bottle. And they'll be like, all right, give me about five minutes, and we'll be ready to leave. And, like, five minutes later, they're, like, fucking hammered out of their mind. Right. I'm like, what the hell? Like, I never, like, like what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. You know? I didn't even know that was fucking possible off of a dozen. Yeah, but hey. Fuck, goddamn. They must have changed the recipe. Right? <laughs> Something. <laughs> yeah, the point is, is that, that I've never intentionally been high. <laughs> See, that, that, to me, that's, I mean, yes, it is a form of high. I would not look at that as, like, getting high. To me, like, the definition, I guess you'd say, of, you know, quote-unquote, getting high, would be, like, with weed. Uh, not hallucinogenic off of robitussin. Gotcha. But I, I guess it is, a, you know, it would yes, be classified as a form of high, but... The nickname for fucking Phoenix is the Valley of the Spun. Mm. So, you know, fucking meth and Mormons everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just saying that, uh, yeah, these are the tropes. That sounds like it could be like a either album name or <laughs> some like tour name. <laughs> Meth and Mormons <laughs> everywhere coming to a town near you. Oh, shit. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. <sighs> hey, man, did you hear that Meth and Mormons song, man? <laughs> it's awesome, man. Be like fucking. Let's go get some Robitussin and get fucked up, man. <laughs> be like fucking Grudel Yankovic meets the Grateful Dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of, you know we could do this. <laughs> now I kind of want to do this. Oh shit! Like we we're having that conversation. Oh, so this is when you know we were supposed to be recording one of the nights you came over and we never did about the PSAs. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You want to get into that on the air? <laughs> Was that the one where we were joking about the, the animal nature documentaries? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so before we get into that. Take your shot. You're going to need it. Oh, crazy. Well, that too. But <laughs> we got way off topic, though, about, like, the past years. So, so in general, the fun and engagement of, of this kind of thing. In retrospect of the past year, what's been some downsides for you? Or what were things that you were like, yeah, we could have done better or could have um, fucking, uh, I never want to do that again or like, you know what I mean? I mean, other than the anal sex. <laughs> it was fine on my end. I don't, I don't know, you know, she, did, she, she was walking funny afterwards, but I was, I was okay. <laughs> Wait. Too much? Dogs. No. <laughs> Dogs like I can't feel my tongue. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what did you do to my dog? <sighs> it's like <gasps> the worst part is that's actually a fucking thing from a fucking Robin Williams fucking stand up, but I can't remember what the context of the joke was. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no, I'm gonna have to fucking look that up. Yeah, because oh, I remember it was my from, dog out of it. <laughs> it was from his uh, live on Broadway show, but I can't remember the context of the joke, which okay. makes it even worse. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but um, I could probably say like the only major you know downfall to this whole year was the COVID related bullshit. Is the scheduling or oh, yeah, you know, in, in certain cases it's like you know stupid you know my regard stupid amounts of freaking overtime at work right which is great but it doesn't leave me time to do anything else right and this is part of that doing something else i want to have the time to do this yeah you know like they asked me today if i wanted to come in and work four hours or so tonight and i'm like no i got shit to do right so that would definitely be like you know the biggest downfalls because this is like i said this is one of the things i i look forward to because of how hectic my rest of the week is, right? You know, or the rest of the month is. Yeah. When it comes time to just being able to just, all right, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna relax, have a couple of drinks, you know, have a cigar or you know, vape or whatever the case is, right. and just chill and bullshit for the night. Right. Yeah. I look forward to that because that's like that's my getaway. Yeah. 
It's like a mini vacation of like, okay, this is one day we'll, we'll allow indulgences to just fuck off and yeah, not. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, quite, like, okay. Granted, the other night, that was kind of a, I'm not going to say an oddity for me, but it was definitely an oddity the fact that I did it on a work night, because apparently I was <laughs> not paying attention. <laughs> We were, well, was it just one of those like, oh, I'll have another and then another and then another? Like, yes and okay. no. Part of it was out of spite. Part of it was <laughs> because it tasted really good. So I started off with it's a uh, beer that's done by Omegang Brewing here in New York, mm. and then you have a company called Ale Smith out in California. Ale Smith makes a coffee stout called Speedway Stout. Mm. And Alma Gang has one that is called Three Philosophers. Mm. Speaking of coffee drinks, I yes. finally finished off that fucking bottle of Jameson. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. So, so I officially drank a whole fucking bottle of fucking cold brew Jameson to myself. Nice. Which, you know what? I'm kind of proud of. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Actually, it didn't take you as long as I thought it was going right? to. Right? Like, getting better. Yeah. yeah. You're learning. <laughs> So what they did was the two different companies collaborated and basically said, okay, swap recipes for those two beers. Okay. And what they did was they combined them. So you have Only Gang's Three Philosophers and their version of Ale Smith's Speedway Stout okay. blended together. Gotcha. Then Ale Smith did their Speedway Stout and their version of Three Philosophers gotcha. blended together. Mm. I have not found the West Coast version, which is Alesmith's product. I have found the East Coast one, which is Omen Gang's version, mm. and it is insane. Really? It is absolutely insane. Smooth as hell, mm. and 10.8% alcohol. And I say this <laughs> because I was having a conversation, and it was one of those like, you know what? Yeah, I'm in the mood for you know some whiskey, whatever. So I poured myself you know two fingers of whiskey in a glass. Down that, all right, I'm pretty good. It fit what I needed. Right. It was just a little taste, and I was good. Had a yeah. nice little warm feeling going on. I'm good. Get dinner. I'm going to have a beer with dinner. Ooh, I haven't had that one yet. I want to try that one. Crack that bottle <laughs> open. Start drinking the beer. Oh, my God, this is fucking amazing. Then that glass is empty. And then I had another one. Mm. Now that's two. At 10.8% alcohol, and the whiskey. Right. After dinner, or, or during dinner, the wife and I having conversation, and it's basically, you know, she buys what she wants to drink, and she consumes it. I buy what I want to drink, and it, like, because it's higher end and more, like, just straight alcohol rather than hers is, like, the mixed, ready-to-drink drinks. Right. Like, I have a lot of beer, but I have way more invested into my whiskeys than I do my right. beers, right? Yeah. So, and this is what we're referring to as far as who spends how much on what. And, and you know, well, you've got this. And, you know, well, you've got three bottles you haven't even opened yet. They've been sober there for a year. And I'm like, well, yeah, why would I open them? That's not, I'm not just going to open them all willy nilly. <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, so it comes up. So now we're having this conversation and it's one of those you know it gets stated like you know well you're spending all this money on stuff what happens if something happens and you can't have it anymore you just wasted all that you're not even enjoying it which is a valid like, point okay i call bullshit you've got friends that will help you <laughs> but not if i can't have it if you can't have it you still have friends that will help i you. have friends that will have it for me <laughs> but i will help me enjoy I will it do that for you Mike. i bet you would <laughs> I, I will take I, that onto myself, I, and I will take that responsibility, <laughs> and I will be there for you when you need it most, and I will be available to drink your whiskey. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> I'll be selling numbers and lines out the fucking door. All right, here's your number. Get in line. Fuck no, no, no. One we'll, shot each. We'll do old school fucking bootlegging where we have the fucking little flask and the fucking the ankle breeches. Like. Yeah. Be like, look over the shoulder, look over the other one. Be like, we got what you need. Yeah. <laughs> Fucker, you better give me that shit. I'm about to rip somebody's fucking head off. Oh, so anyway, so we have this conversation. And it wasn't like an argument or an angry right. conversation. It was like we're picking on each other in right, a way, right? Yeah. So out of spite and jest at the same time. I sat there and I'm like, well, fine then. I'm just going to, you know, 
Well, I'll have more of this one. It was already an open bottle. Yeah. It was the only opened bottle that I had over there, but it was about <laughs> half full still. Yeah. So then I had the whiskey, then the two beers, and then I had another like about half a pint of whiskey with a yeah. single ice cube in it. And it just kind of snowballs from and there. And then after I drank <laughs> that, I was talking on the phone with, I think, my uncle. And I started drinking some more whiskey. It's my second glass. And then I got done with that, and I was playing Call of Duty on the PlayStation. Mm. Then I got off of there, and I got on the phone with a buddy of mine named Alan. And while talking to him, I had another glass. And each one is getting a little bit more full and full and full right. because I'm not paying attention to how much I'm pouring. And this is a, like, Wednesday night. Well, the next thing you know, that half a bar-sized bottle of maple whiskey mm. is gone. Yeah. Because I went to pour more in the glass, and it was like I got about half a shot worth. <laughs> and I went, oh, shit. And the whole, like, look at the bottle go, where did you go? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, all of a sudden, they, like, at that point, it clicked. This was half a bottle. Oh, no, I'm in deep shit come tomorrow. <laughs> so... That being said, which like I said, not that I can't handle my alcohol, you yeah. you, you know that, but the next morning having to get up at five o'clock to go to work, <sighs> right? Like that that's a rough. not fun. Yeah, you know, driving to work, it's all nice and dark still, and you walk in the building and it's everything's brightly LED lit, like how this room yeah. is. And it's like oh, it's like, oh fuck oh, me, make it stop. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. around noon is when I stopped having a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh, so for me, let's see, the biggest downside of doing these has been primarily the editing, part of which is on me and part of it's just inherent to the structure. Yeah. So there's some parts of editing that are just a part of what makes good sound quality, what makes the conversation flow, cutting out a lot of dead pregnant pauses and things like that. Yeah. The other part of the editing, which is on me, is that I tend to, with whatever I'm doing, end up getting tunnel vision and get really fixated on, quote-unquote, doing it right. Yeah. And end up so minutely tweaking stuff that, Especially in a lot of like the earlier episodes, some of the editing was to the level of what you see in music production when they remaster stuff. Yeah. And it's like, wait a minute, how did I get doing this off of a simple edit job that is off the cuff and supposed to be fun to begin with? Yeah. And now yeah. I'm fucking, where the fuck did this, like, fuck. But now I'm halfway through and have to finish the thing. So fucking, you know, so it, it becomes this weird, like... You can't like, do the second half like shit. And they'd be right. like, what the fuck happened it, to you? It's, he yeah. must have been drinking when he was editing it. <laughs> right. Like, and so that's been on me of trying to manage that and figure out what levels of unpolished I'm comfortable with. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there is a lot of it that's just inherent to the process. And all of it's takes way longer than I actually want to fucking put into the investment of it, you know? And it's not to say it's not fun or good or worthwhile, but it's like, at a certain point, you start racking up the numbers of, okay, if it takes, you know, a week to edit, then that's a week that I could have been making art. Like, uh, yeah. fuck, all right, am I an entertainment company or am I a fucking artist? Like, it, yeah, it, it, I understand. there's that kind of, like, struggle and fucking trying to find a healthy balance of that. So that's been one of the major downsides that I've been working on figuring out ways of getting around, you know? Mm -hmm. So other than a general overall, is there any specific highlights that stand out to you is like remember when we fucking had this conversation remember fucking when we talked about like x y and z that was fucking awesome like yeah well yeah we've had a lot of good conversations and the problem is i go through and i listen to the different podcasts especially like if i'm at work by myself whatever like at night whatever the case is i'll put that on and to me it's almost like a and I run around in a tutu and I, no, string and no fucking... but i mean it's, it's like <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, there are times where like I'll hear something on the podcast. And, like, I swear to God, I thought you were going to say yes. There are times I run around in a tutu and a yeah. shoestring. <laughs> But that has nothing to do with podcast. No, not at work. I was like, um, wow, okay. Only when I'm at work by myself, though. Not with anybody else. But, you know, there are times I'm listening to it and I'm going, I, I really do not remember saying that. Like, I don't remember that. We had that conversation? What the fuck? And uh, I don't know if it's it's just the, the time frame from when we have the discussions versus when they're on the release on Spotify with our kids, but... Yeah, there are a few times I'm going, wait, I did I really just, did I just say, holy <laughs> shit, you know, like, I just said that, oh my god, I must have been fucked up, <laughs> and then there are other times, like, I'm listening to it, and I'm going, oh, that was a good night, I remember that drink, Yeah, or, I remember that beer, I remember that whiskey, <laughs> or, you know, we had a lot of fun that night, yeah. and, or, you know, we're joking about something, I'm like, yeah, that was fucking awesome, you know, like, we keep bringing up the night we did the podcast over at Carl's. Uh, you know, I was like, we had a lot of fun that night. It was not our normal format. Him back on, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, we'd probably have to go over there to do it. Yeah, but, yeah. but again, in the new place, it'd probably be easier because you got a bigger living room area. Yeah, but we'd have to so, figure out how to adjust that for a fucking quarantine. I don't know. There's logistics we can work around. Yeah. Well, oh yeah. There's um, always a way of figuring it out. Yeah. But yeah, so it's a matter of like so doing like, doing I it. I don't remember what season it was. It might have even been the last season, but it still stands out to me a fucking stupid juice. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, that was definitely first season. Uh, it's still yeah, like see, there, there are moments where I'm still like good. Yeah, the hard part is the okay. Juice. <laughs> the conversation and developmental discussion of stupid juice was season one. Right. The actual doing it and drinking it was season two. So it's like <laughs> Which just sounds weird discussing it in that right. manner, but yeah, like it this. is. No, I've uh, come to realize like I want to you know, like we were discussing the uh, different microphones and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Not saying that the system we have now, by any means, is incapable or not good enough or anything like that. Mm. But I know that after looking into stuff, that there is definitely better available. Oh yeah. And for not much more than what this setup costs, we could have a better setup. Yeah. You know, like we've discussed doing a you know live recording at a bar. Right, right. You know, it wouldn't be that hard to do that. And yeah. it really wouldn't, really wouldn't be that much to get the components needed to do that. Right. I don't know about the legality of having a conversation with somebody in a bar and recording it without them knowing, <sighs> or even for that matter, if you can do it at an establishment like that without the premises, you know, managers giving approval. You know, I don't know. I'm going to guess because I don't know. If I had to guess, I would say that you'd have to have the establishment's approval, mm-hmm. and that as long as the person being recorded provided a quote-unquote legal release Mm -hmm. which could be anything even as simple as them acknowledging they're being recorded no no, i'm not saying like not telling them that they're being recorded i'm saying you know for example we're having a conversation okay this person three tables over is being really loud and starts laughing because right. we're in a bar, everybody's having a good time. Right. Do I need to go tell them that, hey, I just recorded you laughing? You know what I mean? No. I don't think so because I think that falls under public space, but I'm not positive. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like that type of scenario, not not anybody in direct contact. Because right. at that point, then you just tell them, like, hey, look, just so you know, we're recording a podcast, right. yada, yada, yada. Yeah. You know, th- this is what's going on. I'm saying, like, just in general, people in the building that may or may not get picked up as background noise. Yeah. yeah. You know, you if something needs that. to be addressed. Or for that matter, like I said, the establishment's management and or property owner. Yeah, we'd have to look into that. So, but like I said, there's, there are different things I've, I've looked at and I've thought of because I think it would be a lot of fun. For example, like, while well, you've been with me up to the distillery. Mm-hmm. You know, you go up there and we're just hanging out, having a great time. Drinking, you know, locally made whiskey. Right. Having good food, chilling outside by the campfire, whatever the case is, or, you know, what have you, inside, whatever. Yeah. And just doing our podcast there. Yeah. And at that point, it's one of those, depending on on the microphone setups and the recorder setups, whatever the case is, it's anywhere is game to record a podcast. Right. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be here on a scheduled 
specific night and a specific time or anything like that. Right. We can say wherever. Dude, what are you doing this weekend? Right. Let's go fish and record a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's not a bad idea either. So, yeah. <laughs> that just reminded me of conversation we had about going to an art museum and fucking exactly. putting up the little stickers yes. and doing that while recording. And exactly. We <laughs> like, can do that while recording. And at least then it's like, okay, you may not have a video to go along with it. Right. But, but still, you'll like, have the audio to listen to of us just laughing hysterical and then yeah. getting thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. What do you mean I can't put that there? Now it's art. <laughs> right? Oh, shit. Don't make me get a banana and duct tape, motherfucker. <laughs> so fucking shit. Like, really. Just recently found online a copy of a movie called The Art of Steel. And it's like 2009. And it's all about the city of Philadelphia blatantly outright stealing what was known as the Barnes Collection, okay, that is essentially the greatest collection of modern impressionistic art that exists anywhere in the world. Okay. And Barnes was vociferous about, like, fuck the establishment, fuck you people, you don't have a clue about any of this shit, you should never touch this, to the point that he put it in his will, of, this is in my house, the only purpose for this is to be a school to educate people about art and will not be lent, will not be borrowed by anyone, will not be removed from the premises, will not be moved anywhere. That's in his will. Hmm. To which all sorts of fucking clusterfuck and dirty dealings and underhanded shit and ended up, long story short, getting fucking hijacked and taken and moved to the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Yeah, which is completely against his last will. Now, mind you, we're talking collections where one painting reasonable would be five hundred million, what? and he has hundreds of originals. Yeah, it's the greatest collection Holy shit. to the point where no one could own it. You're talking. One of the commentators in the movie said, "You know, you're talking about a." country that would have to pool resources to be able to afford to buy the collection huh. okay yeah and not like a small country like you know right okay at least second and world <laughs> which was essentially <laughs> stolen and put into museum and fucking all sorts wow. of shit right anyway it's a movie about this and found a copy of this documentary online and so sat social networking manager down and was like, here, watch this. This is what we're up against. Mm -hmm. Like, of this is how fucked up and corrupt the art world is. Yeah. Like, now you can get a better picture of what we're dealing with and yeah. why we're doing what we're doing. Is because outside of the right and wrong and moral issue, there's the, yeah, but the actual benefit culturally of art that doesn't exist because people are doing this. Yeah. You know, so it's like, yeah, we're actually trying to fucking do something about it. <laughs> so, which to that regard, I say, fuck Vanta Black. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Oh, God. Pink is the shit? I mean, what, what are you going to say? I don't know. <laughs> right. But, yeah, so... What was I going to say? Sorry, I'm all fuzzy and fucking two shots in. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Well, you still got three quarters of a bottle over there. Yeah, no, I'm not going to fucking pinch that bottle, because no. fuck you. <laughs> no, no. So, anyway, what... Not to cut you off, but right. as far as to segue to the second half of what you had asked me, what are your aspirations in moving forward from here? Where so, would you like to see this podcast within season three? I have a lot of ideas, but I don't know. You're seriously going to make me take my pants off? No. Okay, good. <laughs> No, unless we're busting out the tutu. Well, it is season three. After all, I thought that meant third base. <laughs> no, we got to save that for the, the season opener. <laughs> oh. Speaking of opening. 
so I've got a lot of ideas, but I don't know how practical or how like capable they would be of being done or, mm-hmm. or anything of logistics or actual capability. But one of the things is very similar to in line with what you're talking about, about making it far more accessible and organic as opposed to, you know, having a set night and having, you know, set set up. Another part of that that I've been looking at is while I enjoy the interaction and the dynamic of, for lack of a better term, like a long form conversation. Yeah. I want to figure out a way to break that up more. And it's not to say that I don't want to have long form conversation, but even if it's something that I'm deeply passionate or intensely engaged in, with all I have going on and with all the different stuff I do, it's still asking a lot to sit down and fucking listen to, you know, a conversation for four hours, even if it's in something I'm super interested in or something like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. In a similar way, I don't think that that is going to be as accessible for anybody in the audience as well. You know, now that someone may listen to one hour here and one hour there and one hour there. Yeah. Great. But putting the responsibility on them of remembering where they were and things like that, rather than making it easily and accessible by breaking it up, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I don't dislike the long form conversation, but figuring out a way to, break it up into manageable cognitive bite-sized chunks like chapters right or something like that you know having some aspect of that where it's more chapter structure yeah having some aspect where on the one hand i like and enjoy and want more of the variety of like you suggest let's go fishing you know, yeah. let's go to a bar, let's go do some different, and part of it we do have of that aspect of God knows what we're going to talk about. Yep. You know, but also in that different environments and things like that, that will also encourage that, you know. Yeah. I think it is definitely something to aspire to. Conversely, and I don't know necessarily how to make them fit, whether they can fit or what. But I like the idea of having set staples of things that we always do. So, for instance, even though God knows what we're going to talk about, yeah, whatever it is, we're going to be drunk and have fun doing it. Yeah. Okay. Well, in a similar vein, there's a similar function of, well, what if every episode we mentioned or highlighted for 10 minutes a new piece of art i don't necessarily mean my art but like like i had to laugh fucking because apparently popular media has suddenly discovered an artist that i'm well familiar with and have always appreciated is this artist named artemisia gentileschi and she was a contemporary of caravaggio baroque period Real high contrast, light and shadow, did a lot of religious painting, etc., etc. Well, apparently the fucking popular media is like, we're rediscovering this. And I'm like, that was rediscovered fucking like yeah. 100 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where my lighter is. It's fucking, it was somewhere, but I may have shut it in You probably left to sit on the table. Nope, it's in my pocket. There it is. But it's funny because it's like they like rediscovered it. I'm like, what the fuck rediscovered the fucking? And then they did this whole like on uh, I want to say it was uh, PBS. They did this whole like expose clip, and half the information was wrong, and the other half was fucking really skewed. Like, really, for, for so particular... just, just and shitty. Just like, I'm like, yeah, you're missing half the fucking cool shit about her. Aww. Like, it was so weird. Yeah, you can't but... do like a documentary and fuck half of it up. Right, like, it's so it was this weird thing, but getting back on topic, as an example, being like, taking ten minutes and just talking about why it's cool or what you think about it or, you know, things like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
and like each episode covering a different piece of art or a different artist or something like that or having some staple like that in a similar vein some aspect of the same thing that we discussed at the end of fucking season one of figuring out a way to incorporate more of the occult nature of what i do specifically and figuring out a way to bring that in so for instance to be something of like you know every episode taking 10 minutes and fucking talking about you know what it was when we were doing the whole fucking when we had all the fucking scheduling shit and quarantine and all that shit and i did the fucking episode and i was making fun of the fucking reddit yeah i remember listening as to that one that was fun as that was and as painful as that was for me, I thought that not only made compelling audio, mm -hmm. but I thought that on some level it was at least providing something of contrast of here's how <laughs> someone who does this shit looks at this. So you're saying that that episode actually had substance <laughs> versus... No, I'm not saying that, that the We're just the fluffers. <laughs> do, have don't, but it has substance of Value? something to do with the occult <laughs> as opposed to our regular conversation, which is God knows what it's going to cover. Like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. but having something like that as a even if it's 5, 10, 15 minutes of a every time we at least touch on this. Yeah. Well, it's like when we first started off in season one for a while there, it was like I was doing a brief review of what cigar I was having, and then I was doing like mm. a brief review of whatever whiskey we were drinking. Yeah. And... And we got sidetracked with just fucking getting drunk and bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think that kind of ended with the Stupid Juice episode. <laughs> But yeah, it's stuff like that toward the question of what would I like to see come out of season three. I don't think it is practical or reasonable to set some hard defined like absolute of season opener, episode one of season three. We're going to have this, this, and this, and this. You know what I mean? But over the course of season three, that by the end of it, we will have a clear, here's what we're going to have. So what you're saying is by the end of our third year, maybe have our heads out of our ass enough <laughs> to be able to have a functional and semi-structured game plan of how the podcast should go. You know, ambitions. Uh, yeah, okay, I got you. <laughs> whether it actually happens or not, hey, or whether we just get I drunk. I said and... maybe. <laughs> okay, okay, as long as we have that caveat. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> and then there's things where it's like, not for nothing. There's a big part that just enjoys this. this like, <laughs> and I don't think it's without value. Like, no. Oh, know. hell no. Anybody that knows us knows how much fun we're having right now doing this. Yeah. In this specific moment, just the chit-chat bullshit back and forth, they, well, most of them have seen it firsthand. Right. They know the chemistry that's going on right now. Right. Yeah, you know, in that regard, and of those listeners, which could be all of them, for all I know, that have all five, that, <laughs> <laughs> maybe a sixth, that have seen us, for lack of a better phrasing, live and in action, I have seen my balls that, <laughs> <laughs> in marinara sauce. <laughs> you forgot about that, didn't oh, you? I wanted to. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> So um, you tell them the story or am I? No, yeah, no. no. <laughs> right, we should we'll, wait till the next time we'll leave that a certain season someone three. comes home <laughs> and have him explain the story because he still hasn't owned up to it. Oh. <laughs> oh, we have a plan now. <laughs> we still got yeah. an Operation Hulk to go on. <laughs> that too. All right. Goals for season three. Yeah, All yeah. right. <laughs> Well, and that goes back to that thing where it's like, it is not that I do not enjoy this, and it's not that I don't think that this free-form, open conversation structure, it's not that I think that this isn't it's not cool lacking, anymore. This, like, but yeah, it could be better. It's one of those where, okay, that I like this, does that mean that's the only thing we can do? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if there's a way to do both, how do we do that? And what are ways that we can 
make that work. And I don't think that they are mutually exclusive. I think that we can do both. It's just a matter of figuring out how, you know? Yeah. So that's some of my major goals, ambitions for it. What about you? What you want to see? Um... Other than my ass and fucking a leotard. <laughs> leopard print baby <laughs> and ice skating <laughs> oh fucking i'd fucking break my goddamn leg are you fucking kidding me it's all right all or nothing buddy <laughs> all right if i'm doing ice skating though i've got to get the star spangled banner you leotard all right yeah i'll allow it <laughs> and inya's music <laughs> Only time? Sure. All right. <laughs> I can make that happen. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> oh. I'm just picturing my head. That's awesome. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So the, the song that I have in my head, it makes it even better. And oh. I don't want to play the audio clip and have you be like, you know, oh. have to edit too much out, but. And I can do the fucking Richard Simmons fucking afro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right then. So I actually I had a, speaking of wigs, I had an interesting thing. I called you fucking bitch to me about my segues. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it worked though because it reminded me of yesterday, day before conversation with one of the guys that works at the post office hmm. okay and they're having problems one of the packages i shipped out got stuck in new jersey and the customer would call me up like hey what the fuck where's my shit and you know so i said look i need this to get there i don't care if i have to come in and pay for it to be overnighted from new jersey to california it needs to be delivered right. he's like well, let me look into it and you know i'll let you know tomorrow when i find out blah blah and I said, look, I don't want to be, you know, that customer being a dick. I don't want to be the one that walks in and everybody's like, oh, fuck this guy. Right, right, You know, right. and he goes, no, 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 you, you, dude, dude, you are not being a Karen, no problem. Like, that type of mentality. <laughs> and I said, dude, don't tempt me. I'll fuck, I'll go get the wig and I'll fucking come in there anyway. <laughs> and uh, so then, now mind you, he has like the same hairstyle I do, right? Okay. So he goes, oh, no, if you're going to get a Karen wig, you got to get me one too. I was like, dude, I'll get you one. I said, we walk from the post office to the little bar in town, I said, we're sitting and having a couple of drinks with our Karen wigs on. And he's like, fuck yeah, let's do it. So now I got to try and find two Karen wigs. Nice. Because I don't think he's got the balls to pull it off. I'll do it. I'll walk right into the post right. office holding one and wearing the other. Like, come on, buddy. Right. Let's go. See, and this is what I mean by like thinking of like staples and structures of things we could do. Imagine having a setup where we can record anywhere. And then having a fucking segment every time of, you know, this is this month's put up or shut up. Oh. Like, you know what I mean? Where every month we, and it doesn't even have to be us, but just interactions that we have that we normally have with people all the time. Yeah. That never gets recorded. And the only people that know about our close friends where we check people on their bullshit and go, look, if you're going to say it, fucking do it. Yeah. And then record the event. Yeah. Would be fucking awesome. But you know how dangerous that could be? <laughs> Look, I didn't say it was logistically possible. I said that it no, may no. not be... Like, no, it's logistically possible. There are, but you know how dangerous that can get? Oh, yeah. Put up like, or shut up? Like, come like, on. I, I understand this. Like, hey, <laughs> you want to run your mouth? Let's step up to the plate. Fucking here's a fucking charm marinara. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got the asshole crown for nothing. That's right? all I'm saying. Like, but my point is, is that... I'm an asshole, and I got the couch to go with it, motherfucker. Right? <laughs> but that's my point. It's like like having the opportunity to just have a free flow open conversation like we're having is awesome. But that would be awesome, too. And it, I don't think that it's something we have to pick. We can only do one or the other. Like... You know what I mean? It's just figuring no. out how to do it both. And you, you know, gotta figure too, if we're recording, do it right. if we're recording, say, uh, once a month, that gives you a month to have some scenario right. of, you know, put up or shut up, or however you want to word it, or, or even if it's a matter of, you know, 
drunken sorcery on the streets. Mike's moment of truth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This week's explosive content brought to you by <laughs> right, like, yeah, and it's I, just like you know, a ten minute segue. Me like, mother fucking son of a bitch, right? Pig shit, fucktard, piece of fucking Mike's dog two shit. minutes of rage, and all you oh. do is cuss for two minutes. Like, I could do that. That's <laughs> right. but the point is that there are all sorts of different things that we can do. I'm gonna, Even I'm gonna if get they're a, not I'm, in every episode. I'm going to get a Cuomo voodoo doll and just beat the shit out of it for two minutes straight. <laughs> but even if it's not every episode, you can help me with that, but right? that would be like regular, <laughs> yeah. consistent yeah. things. Yeah. You know, that I think... That, that... <laughs> you could do two or three in one episode. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Oh, week one. You know, <laughs> week two. <laughs> right? Like... Shit, just record me driving. <laughs> God damn, get out of the fucking way. You right. stupid <laughs> fucking bimbo. What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh shit, that's a nun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> uh, like one of the ideas I had, there's this thing in old occult textbooks where very often they would put in different spells and rituals that were either complete bunk or they would intermix fucked up and dangerous shit with the actual legitimate rituals so it'd be like step one step two step three those are all fine step four is do this stupid fucking wonky ass shit that's likely to fucking kill you and then step five is back to normal and part of the reason they would do that weed out the is bullshit. to weed out the bullshit and the people that didn't know what they were doing that got access to that book, stole the book, fucking killed the person, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, so that the information wouldn't get into the wrong hands. Okay. That was part of the idea of that. The problem is, is that without having a, I shouldn't say large, but a established generality of understanding of how this shit works. I have a problem. Sounds like a personal problem. My glass is empty. Well, I can fill it for you, but you're not going to like it. It's probably the same color. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. With my health these days. <laughs> Why is it green? <laughs> kind of chunky. <laughs> oh, shit. The problem is I don't have any more of those beers cold. Oh. So I got to switch to something else. Or oh, I can't no, fucking like uh, a but you said you hated it. So no, nah, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not a fan of that one. Yeah. But anyway, so they would do that for that point. Of whiskey I have right now are closed. I don't know which one I want to open next. Well, let me finish my damn thought. What you're thinking about? <laughs> All right, go ahead. So, without having a body of knowledge that understands the subtlety and innuendo of some of those things, even to the extent of having an establishment of a body of knowledge that understand some of the grosser aspects mm -hmm. you end up with all sorts of individuals as well as modern books it's like oh blah 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 this is this great fucking old ritual blah blah it makes me giggle because it's like oh they actually reprinted this <laughs> this is fucking stupid like it's shit like that and to which the response is well how do you know that this is a fucked up ritual when this one sounds just as crazy and you're saying this other ones legitimate and the only way that i can equate it is to say imagine someone who's been cooking for years who went through culinary school who has brought up in a very traditional cooking disciplines yeah now you hand them a recipe book half of those recipes are legitimate and the other half are bullshit that'll fucking make poison that person would be able to look at that recipe and go, yeah, this is going to make poison and this one's going to make a fucking dish that you can eat. Yeah. This one's going to make a dish that you can eat as long as you take out the the step five that says add arsenic. Like, okay. to someone that knows what they're doing, it's glaringly obvious. Yeah. But to the general populace, it's not. And that was the point. Yeah. But imagine, like, every episode just presenting one of those and being like, all right, what do you think about this? And having me just go, ow, ow, stop, <laughs> make the pain pretty stop in my head. So you're this saying every episode, add a little bit of arsenic. Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> the other idea I had, 
and this came from you, but I built upon it. Okay. Okay. Every month or so, we do a movie review. Yeah. Where we watch a bad movie, and then right after, like, we set all of this up, go watch the movie, right after we come in and talk about it. Okay. Okay. But then, at the end of that discussion, we announce what the next bad movie is going to be. So that okay. the audience can then go watch that movie and then wait to hear what our commentary will be about it. So the first one will be blind, but the second one but see, they'll I be able to see. sort of do the opposite. You do the movie review, not announcing what the name is, and see if any of the listening members can figure it out. And then the next episode... How then the next episode, you give them the answer them of what it was. That's a good idea, too. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. Here's a kicker. Something small, like, I don't know, fucking sticker, or something like that, right? Something. If they can say the name of the movie before we announce it, whether it's through sending a message to Patreon or something like that, whatever the case is. The earlier they do it, the bigger the prize, so to speak. I understand what you're going for, but I think that between us giggling at a (laughs) B-movie and the alcohol that will surely by that point be heavily flowed... One of us is going to We're say gonna something about what the like because there's certain movies that even if we don't say the name, it's like yeah, big fucking robot army and futuristic and fucking going to take over and fucking John Connor and the like. Oh right, and then man, like, I said it. Yeah, you know, like that would be my only thing is because remember I the don't... tornado with the sharks came through town right. that shit it's was like, funny you know, what, what movie oh wait, wait, wait yeah. <laughs> like so that would be my only like yeah that'd be a drawback but maybe there's <laughs> something we could do around that like, like... well see no because if you're listening to it when you're sober and you're editing it when you're sober you can cut that out or bleep it out yeah but that's a whole shit ton of work <laughs> considering how drunk we get so Especially There's, sitting there for like an hour and a half watching a B movie, we're gonna be fucking doing shots left and right. right that could like, be another dangerous thing. Doing shots left and right with a B movie? You ever played Goodfellas? Oh, fuck. God. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of movies we can do with that. That's another thing. I'm counting on you to remind me because I will forget. Next Halloween. Yeah. We need to sit down and get drunk and watch Rocky Horror Picture Show. Okay. Yeah, that's one of my goals for season three. <laughs> to do the podcast on Halloween? To have it recorded so that the watching of Rocky Horror coincides with the Halloween release. Okay, so it's released on Halloween. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That also means that we'll have to re-coordinate because fucking between fucking lockdowns and quarantine and COVID and fucking schedules and everything else. Fucking right now, fucking my release schedule is all over the fucking place. I got it yeah. written down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Christ, the, well, the last one we did was like four and a half hours long, so you broke that one up into a couple of segments. Right, because that's the only way my brain can handle yeah. the editing. But that was fine, though, because in all honesty, it's like, granted, there was some of it where it's like, you know, even if I'm listening to it, like, you know, a month apart from each other, it's like, wait a minute, I don't remember what the hell the first half of that conversation was. Right. But at the same time, where it was segmented didn't really matter. Right, 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 right. Like you could listen to each one as a standalone show. Right. But when I listened to them back-to-back at work, right, it right. was like you know one long conversation with a little commercial in the middle. So I was like, okay, yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of, to some extent, it was <laughs> I part say this. On the Bluetooth speakers at work, mm. your laugh carries throughout the building <gasps> over top of the Sick. sound of the machines. Yes! <laughs> because of the pitch of it and the fact that, like, the bass aspect of my Bluetooth is, like, blown out. Nice. So it's nothing but, like, mids and treble. Or, yeah, mids and highs. <laughs> it's insane, like, how loud it makes your laugh sound more than anything else in the whole fucking podcast. Nice. And it's like, what the fuck was that? And all of a sudden I look up, like, hey. Oh, yeah, it's crow. <laughs> That's right. I cackle louder than fucking industrial fucking metal machines. Yeah, baby. <laughs> just, just saying. I just want to give you a heads up on that. <gasps> That's awesome. 
See, most people I imagine would be embarrassed by this. I'm, oh, no. I'm like fucking badge of honor, oh, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. Yep. Oh. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to crack open the bottle of Monkey Fist. Well, before we uh, do that, since we're at time, because I'm trying to keep these smaller yeah. and more condensed. We'll, we'll wrap it up now. We'll go yep. watch our B movie. Sure. And then... Like uh, We'll see what happens after that. All right. Well, since we're wrapping this up, do we want to run with the announce the name of the movie for the next podcast? Sure. Where well, we can we'll we can do that it? this time around. We'll and see we'll what happens from there. Fucking yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll play by the seat of our pants. All right. Are we playing with each other's seat of the pants? Uh, look, I fucking got patches in the seat of my pants because I ripped it out. <laughs> fucking because your goddamn dog. <laughs> yeah, you <he> did. <laughs> More than one pair in the same spot. <laughs> Which is really hilarious is the fact that for all the fucking perverted dog jokes that I've made this episode, <laughs> yep. that one's actually legit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep. no, he ripped was it two or three of your pants uh, it was two. in the same, same spot, goddamn spot. <laughs> anyway, so Mister anyway. Mister Mike, what movie are we going to be watching? We're going to be watching Llamageddon. <laughs> Because and fuck I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will give you a brief synopsis once I find where I put that screenshot. Okay. So just in case, what year is it? It's a 2018 movie. Okay. It's about an hour and nine minutes long. I mean, just in case there's another movie called Lomageddon out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just in case. Uh, let's see. Part of the picture got cut off, but it's, you know, basically a killer llama from outer space crash lands on Earth and begins terrorizing a group of teenage partiers. Oh, all right. I need another <laughs> shot for this one. All right. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another fabulous episode of Drunken Sorcery. <laughs> this is going to be horrible. This is going to be awesome and epic. But I must say, before we go... Mr. Mike, it's been an honor and a pleasure to do two years with you. Hell yeah. So thank you. No and problem. Thank, thank you. you, audience, for putting up with us and <laughs> yeah, listening to us. I don't apologize for my political rants. <laughs> <laughs> I welcome everybody's viewpoint and and will summarily tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> no, no, well all right, you're probably <laughs> I'll be the one standing in the middle of the road going, prove me wrong, bitch! <laughs> oh, no, God. no, in all honesty, though, because I know I do have the tendency to unabashedly just rant about political stuff, and in some cases, it's more of frustration with the system being vocalized and directed at specific targets. But in other cases, like, you know, fucking cockface Cuomo, it's I can't stand that specific person because of their policies and actions. Right. So I don't want to alienate people away from the podcast because of my mouth. How can I put this tactfully? If you do, fuck them. Well, no, that's, that's, <laughs> that's kind of what I was getting at. But at the same time, that's part of how this podcast came about. Yeah. Is me just, well, especially drinking me. <laughs> Filter goes bye bye. Drunky Mike. Drunky Mike. I ain't gonna be Drunky Mike. I ain't gonna no filter. Oh my god, we should do an episode <laughs> where instead of Mr. Mike, we get Drunky Mike. <laughs> Alright. Christ, that'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the million and a half ways this could go wrong, oh, it could go and so I'm going wrong to jail. So <laughs> but it'd be a night to remember. It's like you know, with the one night I was moderately inebriated, and my <laughs> brother had called me and said something as far as you know, can you come over or whatever? And I'm like, and I told him, I said, I'm not drivable. And he goes, You're not drivable? And I went, Yeah. Well, like you can't drive. I said, No, I can't drive. And you don't even want to put me in a car and bring me anywhere either. <laughs> I'm not drivable. <laughs> like, don't bring me anywhere. I am in that mood. I'm fucked up. And I'm not going to give a shit. I am not fit for the public right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, just leave my ass at home. 
That's about the safest place for oh. me and society for me to be in. Right. Well, it's one of those things that, and not to get lost in another tangent in, in the process <laughs> of wrapping this up, but to your point, there was a devout, one would argue, fundamental member of the ideological liberal left mm -hmm. named Christopher Hitchens, to the point where he's one of the members of what's known as the Four Horsemen. Okay, very anti-religious, anti-establishment, anti-government. Mm -hmm. Fuck the man. Everybody do whatever the fuck they want. Everybody's always going to be fuck the man. What about all the women? <laughs> the no, women no, no, were no, fucking the, too. The capital M man. You know. Anyway, point well, is, the capital is that W women. <laughs> point is, is like, that she's that... a big woman. She's got a big W. <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know what to say. <laughs> like big old fat guys. <laughs> Look, if your lips are fucking hanging down to where they're so angled that they're making a W. <laughs> wow. Wow has two W's with a hole in the middle. Yes. I was not referring to beef curtains. I was simply saying <laughs> large, not like, you know. Anyway, the point I was trying to make was... Drive a truck that. through it, badge. I mean, come on. Dude, you can go sailing <laughs> off that shit. <laughs> you ever see a vagina on... How did he wear this? Oh, yeah, Andrew Dice Clay. Have you ever seen a vagina on a uh, movie theater screen? Looks like the Holland fucking tunnel. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's an image I really didn't need. <laughs> I'm just picturing a tractor and trailer coming through that bitch. <laughs> wow. That's a whole new fucking reference to pulling a train. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, Christ. Anyway, so to wrap this up, fucking Hitchens has this fairly well-known quote, and he's a bastion of the old-school liberal mindset, okay, of, oh, you're offended? I'm still waiting to hear your argument. Yeah. And it's the idea where, whether the argument is offensive or not, you treat the person with respect. I certainly try to. Well, and to the point you were making, not only do you try to, but it's part of the point of what this is, is that whether it's something political or whether it's something religious or whatever, even in a completely inebriated state, that we can vociferously dis... dis the fuck. <laughs> yeah, that. We can do that. <laughs> Lots we can do it. We may not be able to say it, but we can do it. We can absolutely disagree in a heated manner, but still treat each other with respect. And it's not about fucking being comforted and feeling good and being told no. fucking. You can absolutely fundamentally disagree with my viewpoint and I can disagree with yours. Yeah. And you're still my fucking brother, and fucking I'd still fucking fight for you. Yeah, I'm like, not going to sit there and, and, I mean, I may literally, verbally tell you to go pound sand. Right. Because I think you're wrong. But I'm not going to sit there and get degrading or disrespectful and intentionally hurtful over right. it, because that's not going to do anything. Right, exactly. That's not going to explain my viewpoint. That's not going to explain why... I think it's wrong or why I might think it's wrong and realize the possibility that maybe you're right. And I wasn't looking at it in that regard because I'm too busy being hateful and spiteful. Right. And so toward that aspect, if someone's taking offense to it, it's kind of a, well, that's great and all, but aside from that, did you hear anything that was said? But it becomes this thing where great, you took offense to it, but you kind of missed the point. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And so it's a either go back or don't listen. And I would say this. If someone could sit there and listen to what I've said out of any political rant, paraphrase what I've said, and explain why that offended them with merit behind it, I would apologize. Because I'm willing to bet they heard one part of it and got pissed off and didn't even really listen to the rest of it, mm -hmm. or listen to the point I was trying to make in it, or anything else other than the, oh, he said, what? oh my god, and right. that's it. At that point, all listening shuts off. Right, right. 
Yeah, it's not to say, especially in a fucking drunken state, that either of us are fucking perfect or fucking we never fucking say anything that could be taken out of context or could be misunderstood. And if it is something that's fucking misunderstood or taken out of context and it came across this, even though that's not what I meant it, yeah. hearing it and having the advantage of a recording, yeah. being able to hear yourself say it in a different mindset, not drunk, <laughs> be like, wow. I came off like a dick. Yeah. Oh, you that's said that not... to you said that to me. Like, yeah, I wasn't sure if I should have edited that out or left that in because, yeah, I know what you meant, and that's not how it came across. Right. <laughs> like there are things like that where it's like those are honest considerations. Where in times like that, yeah, I'd be the first person to be like, look, I meant it this way. That doesn't change that what came out of my mouth was this, yeah. and for what came out of my mouth, I'm sorry. For what I intended. No, I still hold those views. Yeah. Like, but I'm sorry that what came out was this. But that's a difference, and that goes back yeah. to having those real conversations. And, things, and you can listen to it. Yeah. You, you can hear it almost as if a third party listening. Right. Yeah. But that goes back to having <laughs> I those hear real... it after you post it online, <laughs> or everybody can hear it. And I'm going, oh, I said that? Holy shit. I mean, I'm not wrong, but, but damn, I can't believe I said I that out loud. Said that <laughs> differently, like yeah, yeah I it's... kind of worded that a little better. <laughs> but I mean, that's part oh, of well. the heart of it is just having those real conversations without yeah. getting up in arms and in these like ideological, not even political, just ideological. Even if it's a religious ideology or if it's a fucking yeah. economic ideology, getting into these ideological fucking like pillboxes of fucking us versus them. It's like, no, fucking get out and have a real conversation with real people. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that doesn't mean that the conversation is going to be nice. It doesn't mean that the conversation isn't going to be fraught with scandalous words and phrases and you know go pound sand you fucking idiot it just means that we don't have to disrespect each other on the process no no you can be conversation does not have to be war poignant is maybe the word i'm looking for you can be poignant and still respectful yeah i think that's the word i'm looking for poignant. Wrong. whatever <laughs> <laughs> but no i just had a really good idea we can do a recording of me doing a beer sampling at Beer World. Dude. We can do a recording of you in contrast to the average person doing a beer sampling at Beer World. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Everybody else is like, I want to try one or two. Meanwhile, I'll walk up and be like, start to the left, and work your way to the right. <laughs> well, Sir, there's 42 different ones. Yeah, start at the left, work your way to the right. <laughs> and here's Johnny. Johnny, you're on your fifth drink. Yeah, I am. It's a good drink. And here's Mike. Mike, you're on your 14th. Yep, that's tasty. <laughs> Yes, I will say, in most cases, that is accurate. <laughs> Very few times has my body chemistry been off or metabolism been off, whatever the case is, where it's like, third one in, I'm like, holy shit, I gotta stop. <laughs> right. It has happened, but are not you often. surprised when that happens as much as other people are surprised when that happens to you? I'm like, more when that happens to you, I'm surprised and like, Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That I'm surprised. Great. That's I, nice. But honestly, that's me. I think for me, it's more of a, I'm embarrassed. It's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm better than this. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, how I've fallen. I'm yeah, drunk exactly. after I'm, five shots. I can't like, what the, this doesn't happen to me. What the fuck? <sighs> you start punching your fucking one leg going, come on. Why aren't you working anymore? <laughs> You're supposed to be hollow, motherfucker! <laughs> oh, alright, so we opened up on fucking <laughs> linguistic curiosities and porn, and we're ending on hollow legs. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, Come on, that works. Go this ahead. is how you end a season. Yeah, that fits. <sighs> oh, nevertheless, my hollow leg. <laughs> or is it my third hollow leg? Giggity. <laughs> Give it a minute, it'll be hollow. <laughs> and on that note, good night, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs> Crazy.